I'm going to be that really annoying aunt who's just like, let me pinch those cheeks, boy. <laughs> <laughs> I love the southern accent you threw in there. <laughs> Doesn't come well, out Let me pinch those cheeks, boy. <laughs> oh, God. What episode are we on? Okay, hold on. Episode 25. This podcast is a quarter of a century old. Not really a century. A quarter of a podcast 100 years old. And I have short hair now, and I hate it. I think it looks so good. Oh, I hate it. You're stupid then. Oh. So I'm in Tennessee right now, visiting family for Thanksgiving. This is my sister, Laura. Hello. She lives in Knoxville. Um, if this is your first time watching, my name is Jacqueline. This is the Brooklyn Knit Folk Podcast, episode number 25. And normally I live in New York City. Well, I do live in New York City, but I'm visiting... Uh, Tennessee, where I am from. I'm from Nashville. My sister lives in Knoxville. We went to school at UT. Go balls! Woo! Go big orange! And she just had a baby four and a half months ago. And this is him. This is Maverick, which She's I've saying, shown off. Hi, Maverick! Hi. There's so much to look at. <laughs> and uh, yeah. So I just thought I'd show you guys him again because I'm obsessed and I FaceTime with her every day. So. He's kind of always a work in progress. Yep. There we go. Oh. oh. Nope. nope. <laughs> <laughs> There's a fear of spit up right now. Anyway, you guys don't need to know about this. Thank you for indulging me while I show him off. So yeah, this is the Brooklyn Knit Folk Podcast, episode 25. My name is Jacqueline. You can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as at Jacqueline Salem. Show notes for this podcast and all other podcasts can be found on the Brooklyn Knit Folk Ravelry group if you just search in the groups tab. And that's where you can also find out about knit alongs, prizes that I give out, etc, etc. Um, the best way to get in contact with me is through Instagram or through brooklynknitfolk at gmail.com. Thank you so much for everybody who got in touch with me this week. Normally I give a big shout out hello, thank you, but my setup is a little bit different right now. I don't have access to all of my tech and stuff like that, so I will defer the hellos to the next episode. But please know that I read every single thing you guys post in the Ravelry group. I love hearing from you and hearing a little bit about you guys, a lot about you guys actually. So yeah, I'm really just amazed at this community and it's been, you know, a rough couple of weeks with the election and all, but I just want to say that you guys and this community made it so much better. It definitely put me in a funk. I just like couldn't knit for like several days afterwards and yeah it was pretty crazy but I love you guys and thank you so much to people who sent me patterns you know who you are and spreading the kindness and I myself have started donating to Planned Parenthood on a monthly basis so this community is just wonderful what can I say um, the Elemental Long has officially ended and all prizes have been drawn, so if you have not checked the Ravelry thread, I have earburned everybody who has won a prize. So if you haven't been on Ravelry in the past week or so, make sure you get on and check in the Brooklyn Knit Folk Ravelry group to see if you won a prize, because there were several, especially pattern prizes. So I did, like I said, um, earburn everybody who won, but in case you haven't been on, I just wanted to let you know here. And the only other bit of admin that I have is as always um, well not always but at least for the next few months I am a brand rep aka brand champion for Sucre Sucre Miniatures so if you haven't heard of them they're these adorable food charms and I finally got some of my own that I've ordered that I've been waiting for so I can show you them and what they look like and how awesome they are I ordered two so I love croissants so I had to get this croissant charm. Love that. And then I'm obsessed with iced coffee all year round, so I also got this iced coffee charm. So cute, right? So if you haven't heard or didn't know, I am a brand rep for Sucre Sucre Miniatures, and if you're a first time a purchaser or a returning customer you can get 15% off with links that I have for you so if you just go to the Brooklyn Knit Folk Ravelry group there is a group titled Sucre Sucre Miniatures Discount click through there and it will show you how you can get that 15% off discount but yeah I love them use them as progress keepers I think they're awesome and with that, we will jump right into the knitting. I have no finished objects, except for what I'm wearing, but it's not a recent finished object. It is a, 
I guess, what am I wearing? This is my dotted raised shawl. And this is a pattern by Stephen West. I can't ever see it. It's hard to tell if I have it the right way or the wrong way. Whatever. Pattern by Stephen West. And it has these kind of eyelets and flows into this huge, it is like a blanket status. But I love this. It's such a fun way to combine lots of colors. You can go as crazy or as singular colored as you want. And this is my dotted raised shawl. And quite honestly, it's a little bit too hot to be wearing it in here, so I probably won't anymore. So, there's that. But um, for knitting content today, I do have a hoe. That's a half object. And it is my sock design, and I have air quotes around that because I thought I was designing something, and then I discovered that Cabin 4 essentially already designed the same thing I have. I don't know if it's the same number of stitches or the same... A length of the cable or anything like that but it's basically the same thing so if you want to refer to a similar pattern that's what you could do but this is just a little sock that I've kind of been making up on the go it has two cables one cable both of them face inward and then a panel of seed stitch in the middle and I have everything I've done everything on this first one except Kitchener the toe just haven't done that yet a fish lips kiss heel and the yarn is sweet sparrow yarns in the secret garden colorway and it's on her tweed base and I just love these gorgeous flecks of tweed in her tweed base they're very like multicolor, so they've got like kind of the white ones they've got black ones and then there's also yeah like some brown ones in there so I love her tweed base and yeah so that's the first one and I'm almost finished with the second one I just have a little bit left to go on the foot and that's my, again, Sucre Sucre Miniature Progress Keeper from where I had stopped last time. So yeah, just a little bit left to go and these will be a finished object. Here's the yarn cake. And this is living in a new project bag. So Melissa of the Spicy Homemaker podcast, she has organized, or did organize, it's already over now because we had to send everything, but she organized an advent calendar mini skein swap, and I did the uh, week version. There was one where you could do a mini skein every day, and there's one where you could send one mini per week, and then you're supposed to send a, pri or a little uh, um, gift to open right away, and then maybe something a little bit extra for the last day. And I was lucky enough to be partnered with Amber, who has the simple uh, love made, I think that's what it's called. Oh my gosh, I'm blanking on the name all of a sudden. Just make sure that that's right. Yeah. Um, simple love made. And the pr uh, little, you know, prize or gift, I should say, that she gave me to open right away was one of her handmade project bags. She has an amazing Etsy shop. And look at this project bag. We did a little um, questionnaire before we sent out our packages to one another. And one of the things I told her was that I love Rifle Paper Company's fabrics. And she used Rifle Paper Company fabrics to make this gorgeous bag for me. And I am in love with it. It's a drawstring bag. I popped a little lavender sachet in here. This smells so, so good. Oh, it just makes my project smell so wonderful. Every time I pull this out, I love putting lavender sachets into my bags because they make my projects smell so good. Oh, I love it. So yeah, so that's the cake from the Sweet Sparrow Yarns, my tweed socks, and uh, yeah, my Secret Garden socks. I think they look very Secret Garden-ish. I wish I had thought far enough ahead to do kind of like a cranberry or burgundy either heel or toe on this because I think it would have been cute if you haven't seen The Secret Garden before. There's a Robin who plays kind of a, he plays a role in the story, shall we say, and I think that it would have been cute to have um, a little bit of a homage to this Robin in the socks, but I didn't think about it enough in advance. I guess I could rip out the toe and do a red toe, but I've already knit it, so probably not, but hindsight, 2020. So those are my secret garden socks living now in my Simple Love Made Rifle Paper Company project bag. I love it so much. The next work in progress is another pair of socks. 
I haven't made a whole t lot of progress on these yet. These are the Gladys socks and I will put the designer's name in the show notes, but it doesn't follow her pattern exactly. I've mostly been working on the Secret Garden socks because I just kind of want to get those done. So I haven't done a whole lot on these, maybe like an inch or two. But it follows the Gladys sock through here and then I kind of just kind of went rogue on this part. Every sock I'm knitting right now has seed stitch in it and I'm just like, Jacqueline, that was not the best choice. But I love seed stitch. I love how it looks. It's just kind of annoying to knit. But yeah, that's the sock. And this is knit in the wool barn and her cozy colorway on her tweed base. And it's this really lovely gray with flecks of tweed. The tweed's uh, naps in here are mostly black with a little bit of brown ones mixed in. Sorry, the light is just at the wrong spot that it's kind of hard for me to show this to you, but yeah, love this yarn, so soft. I wish that I didn't have this blue cuff on it. I kind of want the whole sock to have been in this yarn. This is just so plush. It's got a nice twist to it. The stitch definition is really good. Um, I knit my socks on nine inch circulars, if you didn't already know that, and I try to knit them concurrently, but this time um, I've been knitting these socks at the same time and I only have two nine inch circular needles. So I'm knitting one sock at a time for it. And then so far it's been working out alright. I want to get some more though so I can knit like two pairs of socks concurrently because it's nice to just be done with them once you're done with them. And most of the time I cast on 56 stitches for my socks. In the case of the Secret Garden socks I cast on 60 stitches because it has two cables in it and cables can make your socks a little bit more tighter and snug. So I just wanted to make sure that they fit. But this one has 56 stitches on it. And the idea is that this kind of design panel would be on the side of the foot. So I'll make sure that when I knit the other sock that it will fall on that side when I knit the heel. So yeah, these are just kind of cozy socks, kind of the Gladys socks, but they're just like, I don't know, they remind me of like a log cabin, like something you would wear in a log cabin. Is that weird? Also, I don't know why I just now thought of this, but um, I just want to say thank you so much to everybody who kind of gave me words of encouragement last time about being a selfish knitter and how right now I just don't have the capacity in my brain to knit things for other people. And there was something that I wanted to read really quick um, that a viewer sent to me. So I will read that now just because I think that it was a really good sentiment. Okay, so she says, a lot of people are knitworthy, but the emotional connection you have with a creation born through your hand, unique due to your hands, color, vision, etc. Sometimes it is selfish of us to think we know what another wants. Before, um, let's see. Oh, before her vision degeneration, uh, she painted and she gave so much away because she thought she had time to create the things that she wanted. It's not selfish to fulfill yourself, to feel the thing that you made with love because you will love it best. And I just thought that that was a really nice sentiment and really so true that sometimes, like, of course I love using my skills and talents to make things for other people, but there's a lot to be said sometimes to not turn your craft and the thing that comforts you and uh, the thing that you enjoy in your life into a job where it becomes stressful and not fun anymore, really. Um, so yeah, so I just thought that that was a really nice sentiment that I wanted to share. So there you have it. Words of wisdom for the day. But yeah, Gladys socks, second one. I'm not really like gung-ho on these right now. They'll get done, but I just kind of knit a few rows on them as I feel like it. And that's because I'm dying to cast on another pair of socks soon. And I can't decide which ones to do. So here are my options. Right now, I'm looking at either this coloring book yarns in the Mary Everything Hexy colorway. And this is a self-striping yarn. These colors are so awesome. It is a holiday themed yarn. Or this one, which is overtly holiday themed. It's actually... Red Heart, Heart and Soul, um, but it's in the Christmas colorway, and I don't believe that this is even, when, I don't think it's even acrylic. I want to say, if I can find it, 
70% superwash and 30 uh, wool and 30% nylon. So there's not even acrylic in it, even though it is Red Heart. And it's a pattern sock. Let's see if you can see that picture there. So I thought that those would be really fun to knit for Christmas. So I'm kind of tempted to cast these on next. I probably will. Or this coloring book yarns. But I'm feeling, I'm kind of feeling like these right now. I don't know. For some reason, these are really calling out to me. I've had this in my stash for forever. And so I'm really dying to uh, knit these up. Plus, it'll be perfect for the holiday season. So, as soon as I finish these Sweet Sparrow yarn socks, the Secret Garden socks, these are going on the needles next. And then the last work in progress that I have is the Heady Shawl, which I've been making slow but steady progress on. I have found finally figured out how to knit without a cable needle. A lovely viewer, thank you so much, sent me direct message links on Instagram to someone who had posted a video on Instagram of how to cable without a cable needle. And I was like, you know what? I have no more excuses. It's out of time. It's like, I can look at this right now. So I'm gonna. And that's what I did. So, let's see, I'm getting lost here. Here we have the center. And that's where I was last time. And that's what I've knit since the last time I've showed you, which is quite a bit of progress, but I have not cabled without the cable needle yet because I still haven't, I haven't knit on this since watching those videos. So I'm hoping that now this will like start really flying. But again, this is the Heavy Shawl by Isolde Teague. You guys are probably sick to death of seeing this, but I can't get over this cable porn, am I right? I mean, is this not just so beautiful? <laughs> I love it. This pattern is just so fun to knit, and the Brooklyn Tweed yarn really does make it shine. It is supposed to be knit in a DK weight yarn, but I am knitting it on Shelter, which is the worsted weight base from Brooklyn Tweed. And again, that's the Hayloft colorway. Here's the cake of the Shelter. Such a beautiful color. One of their best. They're all really great, though. So, have made some progress on this. Hope to make a lot of progress after I finish my socks. And then this isn't a work in progress quite yet, but going to be soon, hopefully. So for a long time viewers, you will, rem will remember that I purchased a ton of this hand spun yarn from the Washington County, Farber Washington County Farm and Fiber Tour last April. So I'm take a sip of... I have about 900 yards of this in my stash, which for my size, typically I'm a size like medium in something, in women's sizes. Sometimes a small, but most of the time medium. So this is, the 900 yards is kind of just shy of what I would need to knit myself a sweater. I typically fall somewhere in like the 1,000 to 1,100, sometimes 1,200 if it's an oversized sweater range. But this yarn is calling out to be a sweater. And I had ideas and plans to make a wrap out of it, but as I've discussed in previous episodes, I have way too many shawls and wraps at this point. I love knitting them. I really enjoy shawl knitting, but I just have so many of them. So unless it's a gift knit, I probably am going to hold off on knitting shawls just for the time being. So I really don't want this to be a shawl because I have so many. And truth be told, since the time I had it, I do regret not buying more. I bought up what was, I bought a few skeins of this the first day of the count, the Washington County Farm and Fiber Tour. And then I went back to go get more and bought up the rest of what they had. But of course there was, you know, like 24 hours in between then of other people buying the yarn. So I didn't get as much as I, as I could have and I do regret it, but I do have 900 yards. Dying to knit the Andawa sweater, the smallest size of the Andawa is 970 yards. It is a, a sweater with a lot of negative ease and it's cropped, even for the, for the smallest size. But again, I'd have to knit at least one size bigger. I haven't swatched for gauge yet. Look at this, here's a cake of it. It's in this just beautiful. It is hand spun by Mother Superior of the St. Mary's on the Hill uh, farm, which is known for actually having uh, for their cashmere goats. But she, uh, Mother Superior, purchased a fleece from Enzyme Brook Farm in Washington County, and that's where she spun this yarn. And it's 100% Cormo. It's a two-ply yarn. Cormo is exquisite. It's so, so soft. 
uh, very similar in softness to merino but a different texture it's a little bit loftier I feel maybe that's just because it's the hand spun I haven't really I haven't uh, felt wool spun cormo in a really long time so I can't it's hard to kind of compare but um, it's a little this one is definitely loftier it, the texture is very velvety compared to merino it's still incredibly soft though this wants to be a sweater it's going to be a sweater. So what I have decided to do is to use what I have, uh, the 900 some odd yards, to start the Ondawa sweater and then supplement it with a new yarn that has just been released this week. And it's uh, made by, let me see, it's being, uh, it's made by Stone Wool and it's sold through uh, Twig and Horn, which is Pam, owned by Pam Allen, who owns Quince & Co., I believe. I'm pretty sure that's right. So Twig and Horn is now selling this stone wool Cormo yarn, and it's also a two-ply Cormo. This is a two-ply Cormo, and they have a natural color. So what I'm planning on doing is knitting the sleeves, the, all the sleeves and the front at least in this yarn and then as much as I can in this one and then maybe alternating skeins with the natural color of the stone wool Cormo two ply yarn. Maybe a bad idea but if it's on the back I can't see it. I'm really you know fuck it it's fine as they say. So I'm not too concerned about it. I do know I want to add extra repeats because it is a crop sweater, so I would like to make a, a little bit longer, but you know, I'll just buy what I need to get that kind of yardage from Twinkenhorn. So hopefully, I'm going to purchase um, at least one skein first to kind of compare and contrast the two yarns to see if it's like even worth, like, or if I need to kind of go for a different one. But the stone wool has like, they kind of describe it on the Twig and Horn website as being kind of like a wool and a mixture of like a wool and spun and a mill spun type of yarn, which is very similar, I think, to the style of this yarn, hopefully. So we'll see how it goes. Could be crazy, but this yarn is dying to be a sweater and it's going to be the Andawa. This is going to be the most luxurious sweater. I cannot wait to wear it and I'm really excited that I've just finally accepted that I want this to be a sweater and to have finally figured out how to use it in a sweater as well. Hopefully it all will go, go according to plan but it's natural. The one I'm buying is natural. I know there are different shades of natural but if I alternate the skeins and buy the white for both hopefully it won't be too noticeable and if it is it's on the back. Can't see it. Who cares? So that's my plans for this Cormo. I cannot wait to have a Cormo sweater. I've been dreaming of having a Cormo sweater and I've also been dreaming of having the Andawa in my wardrobe. So with that, we'll move into the Spoolish game segment of the podcast. And I have a work in progress, no finished objects for Spoolish games. And it is this dress right here. So this is the Vogue V9100. And I'm making, um, it's the same dress, but they are different lengths. I'm making the shorter, the shorter length here. And this is what it looks like so far. This is the fabric, which I absolutely love. It's kind of floral. Right now, it's way too big, for sure. I don't know what it is. I take my measurements, I cut out the pattern to my measurements, and everything I've made so far has been too big. Of course, you can always take things in and make it smaller. You can't make it bigger if you've cut your fabric too small, at least not easily. So, it's fixable. But, this is the dress so far. I put the zip in. Dun, 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 dun. So, yeah. Loving how it's coming along. Basically, it's just kind of some finishing work left to do. Like hemming and sewing the... Oh, the zipper gets caught in fabric here pretty easily. That's not a good sign. Um, and I do need to get some... The thing that's holding me up with this right now is that I need to buy some fabric for the bodice lining. 
So I'm going to line the bodice. It'll be my first time lining a bodice. This dress was supposed to have pockets, but quite honestly, I was just like not understanding it or figuring it out. So I skipped the pockets, took them out, and just made it a straight dress. This fabric is pretty thin and drapey anyway, so I'm not sure how much use I would have gotten out of a pocket because it would have been really noticeable if I had anything in the pockets because, like I said, the fabric is just really really drapey. It's not structured at all, so it would have been very easy to tell if something were in the pockets. So I would always, the only thing I would put in there are like my phone or my wallet, so that wouldn't have looked very good. So, yep. There's the dress so far. I'm loving it. And again, that's very easy Vogue V9100. Um, the pattern sizing just as crazy as ever, it seems that I always have a bust size that is two sizes smaller than my waist and one size smaller than my hips. So I always have to do these weird truing up of uh, different sizes to, according to my measurements. But again, it seems that everything has been too big recently, but I always go by the pattern size recommended by my measurements because it's I know from experience from that with you know from years ago that whatever you're wearing and ready to wear is not even close to the size that you wear here. For example, in ready to wear, I wear anything from like a size 6 on a good day to like a size 10, and here I'm usually somewhere in the 14 to 18 range, so it just goes to show that cut out to your pattern size according to your measurements, not what you wear in ready to wear. So really excited to get this done. Hopefully if I get some fabric for the bodice lining, I'll be zipping right along and wearing this dress in the next podcast, perhaps. I do have some stash enhancements for Spoolish Games. I went a little pattern crazy since being in Tennessee. For some, you know, strange reason, uh, New York City does not have a Joann's or anywhere that sells patterns from the Big Four. And again, the Big Four are the big four pattern producers, McCall's, Butterick, Vogue, and Simplicity. And the closest one is a train ride away, not a subway. It's like a train that you have to, you know, pay for to get out of the city and then an additional 20-minute walk one direction to get to the Joann's. It's just like a, it's a big to-do. So every time I come to Tennessee, I go a pattern crazy, and there just so happened that McCall's was having a $1.99 pattern sale. So, YOLO! I'll show you what I got real fast. Run through them one by one. This one is McCall's M6706, and I got this because I love this full skirt. And they have different lengths here, um, ones that are like a high-low version. I got Lisette B6244, and I love this dress, but I got it for this coat right here, which I love the color, I love everything about this. So this camel coat will definitely be something that I add to my handmade wardrobe. This dress, which is slightly different, um, I guess I could, like the bodice from the first dress I ever made is slightly different on this. The first one I ever made has, for my Rhinebeck dress, has princess seams in it, which means they're kind of like two pieces for the front part that kind of curve in to create the shape of, for the bust area. And for this one, the shaping is done with darts for the bodice. And I love that skirt too. So that's another one. These two are sort of similar, except this one has buttons down the front. And this is McCall's M7084. And this one has buttons that go up the front. Love this. Currently without getting this vintage pattern. This is McCall's M7433. I love this one. Look at that detail on the shoulder. Isn't that just beautiful? Love that. And this one's really cute as well. The long sleeve. This one I got simply for this top right here. This is McCall's M6751. And I love the back of this top right here. The pattern was, again, it was only $1.99, so worth it for that. I love that shirt. This one is McCall's M7407, and this is for Knits Fabrics. 
your stretchier fabrics. I think this would make a great sleep shirt or just a great lounge shirt at home. There's a dress version, but this is a little bit too tinty for my taste. And then finally, this is a pattern I'm really excited about. So a long time ago, years ago, I kept seeing this pin on Pinterest of this gorgeous white coat and I was obsessed with it. I loved it so much. I went on an image search hunt. It took me forever. Like we're talking probably two to three hours to figure out where this coat came from because I couldn't find the original source of the image. And it turns out that the coat is made by Givenchy and that coat was like several thousand dollars. Not in my budget. So I found this pattern right here. Sorry, this light is really throwing me off. Um, for this coat and it's basically uh, I like this one right here because it has the hood on it and I'm going to buy some white wool and some white lining and I'm going to recreate this Givenchy coat myself. I'm so pumped about this. So pumped. I may even make it a little bit longer, just a tad, but I am obsessed with this coat. Cannot wait. Cannot wait to make this. So that is my pattern haul. I got, how many did I get? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight patterns! Yay! But um, so far I've bought mostly dresses and there are a lot of dresses in here, but um, I finally with some of this, you know, this pattern haul have added more separates to my collection. So now I have more tops and skirts because I don't think I have one that's just a skirt so far. So I'm really excited to have added these to my pattern collection. And then finally, the last part of the podcast today is just a little bit of stash enhancement for knitting because I've already shown you my sewing stash enhancement. And that is this skein, my first ever skein of a homespun house yarn. And this is in her bookworm colorway. It's an MCN, merino cashmere nylon, 70% merino, 20% cashmere, and 10% nylon. And this colorway is gorgeous. It's mostly burgundy. Got some purples in there. And some ball bands kind of covering it, but some chartreuse green in there. It's gorgeous. From the second I saw this colorway on Molly's Instagram, I had to have it. And it took her a while to re-dye it again, so I just kind of had to wait until I saw it again. But I'm so happy to have this. It was kind of a toss-up, honestly, with these other ones of which one I would cast on for um, afterwards. But I'm thinking I might save this one for... Uh, my Christmas Eve cast on. And if you don't know what Christmas Eve cast on is, um, Danny from the Little Bobbins Knits podcast has uh, hosted a yearly knit along where we all cast on socks on Christmas Eve together. And I just think that's such a fun tradition. I wanted to do it last year, but I had never knit socks before. I didn't know what I was doing. And I just wasn't ready yet. But this year, obviously, I'm in like sock heaven. So I will definitely be participating this year in the Christmas Eve cast on. And this might be the skein that I cast on for that because it's still kind of holiday ish. Um, the colorway name is Bookworm, which if I'm being honest, that was a big draw of it because I love reading. I worked in bookstores for six years of my life, so the colorway name definitely drew me in. But aside from that, the colorway is just gorgeous. So I cannot wait to cast this on, and it's really, really squishy and soft. And while we're on the subject of stash enhancement, there are two things I wanted to mention. First one is Knit Picks Felici is back for anybody who didn't know. It's a self-striping yarn that is very affordable and great colors and really soft yarn. So head over to knitpicks.com and search for Felici if you haven't heard of it. I'm sure lots of you have heard of Felici, but just in case. And then the other thing, um, I hesitate to mention this because I haven't bought any for myself yet and I don't want her to get too popular before I can buy some for myself selfishly, but there is a new to me Discovery Dyer. Um, uh, her Etsy shop is called Peepaloo Fields. And for those of you who wanted to buy Druzy Rising yarn and couldn't get your hands on any, and she hasn't been very active on Instagram lately either, so I'm not sure what her status is with dyeing, Peepaloo Fields yarn reminds me so much of Druzy Rising's dyeing style. It's gorgeous, gorgeous yarn. So I would definitely have a look over there. Um, she's got a very well-stocked Etsy shop, and 
I'm honestly shocked that it's not like sold out all the time because it's just beautiful. The colorways are gorgeous. So I would um, just say like if you want to look up a new dyer, People Who Fields, I love her stuff and cannot wait to buy several skeins of that. And with that, I think that's it for the podcast today. I think this is going to be kind of a shorter episode, just because I'm not at home with my usual setup, so I don't have every single thing to show you. But I've been pretty monogamous with my Secret Garden socks, and I honestly didn't get a whole lot of knitting done post-election, so I kind of lost about four days of knitting, because I just didn't, didn't feel like it. But I will stop <laughs> chatting your ear off about that and just say thank you again so much for everybody who is a part of this community and watches the podcast. And if you like it, please hit like or subscribe if you want to see new videos. And I would love to hear from you again in the Ravelry group or on Instagram. Please tell me all about you and what you're making and what you're doing and tag me in your projects. I love to see them. So I hope you guys have a really great couple of weeks until I see you next time. Bye-bye! Mwah!